All right. Welcome back to a silver lined relaunch. And ooh, you know when you wake up in the morning and you think, what do I really need to hear today? And this could not come at a better time in my own company's journey, which I am positive given that you all are avid listeners of this podcast, that this will be the perfect timing for you to hear from Laurel Langmire. And Laurel, I got to tell you again, she, she is on fire. She is a money expert. She has been on the speaking platforms around the world. She is a thought leader around entrepreneurship, five time New York Times bestselling author. You all know I'm in the process of writing my book now, so could even have some conversation around that. And she is on a relentless mission to change the conversations about money and empower people around the world to become millionaires. Yeah, you heard that right. You all can be a millionaire. It is possible. This episode is brought to you by the Fired Up Entrepreneur Program. And this is a program that we are so proud of. The results have been downright remarkable. And we want to invite you to get a glimpse of what it is like inside this program by inviting you to participate in the business boot camp, which is a five day free event and get involved with this because the pearls that we're going to be sharing each and every day are going to be the foundation for allowing you to make money, keep the money, grow the money and strengthen not only your business, but also yourself. So please take advantage of this and join us at our next boot camp. You're listening to the Silver Lined Relaunch, and I'm your host, Hillary DeCesar, award-winning entrepreneur and transitional coach. Each week, I'll invite you to tune into inspirational stories, revealing how you too can turn ordinary experiences into the extraordinary. Feeling stuck? I'll share step-by-step -step strategies to fuel your ability to experience a life where silver linings are both abundant and possible. All right, Laurel, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Hillary. It's great to be here. Well, I got to tell you, well, fun, fun conversations before this even started. I'm sure people would have been like, ooh, so good. But I'd like to begin with, for those that, you know, are, are just meeting you or just hearing about you, impressed as I was to have this conversation and now they get a chance to listen in on this. Can you share with us your background, but most importantly, the most impactful relaunch that has gotten you to where you are today? Oh, and there's so many. So there's part of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, which one? right? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that the case? I mean, Laurel, that which, is the case. One, Everyone one, has numerous, one. numerous relaunches, right? The big, the small, but what would be the most, you know, the most impactful for you and where your journey has caused you to be now? All right. Well, I'll give you a little backstory. So I grew up in a farm in Nebraska and um, I always, you know, start with that. Anybody who's grown up in the Midwest and I love that you're now in Colorado. That's where I learned to ski. Uh, we would go out there all the time. <clears throat> so I grew up in a big farm family. Again, no conversation with money. And I would ask most of those that are listening, most people don't grow up with a conversation about money, which is why I'm so passionate about it, is financial literacy is lacking everywhere. Mm -hmm. And after doing this now for 25 years, I mean, I've really decided and I teach and I'm really passionate about the fact that it's the parent's job. I mean, everyone keeps saying we're going to force it to the school system. It's not going to happen that way. So when I was 17, um, I was headed off to college and I got the book Think and Grow Rich from Dennis Waitley. 
Um, I don't even remember how I ended up at some, some event. Uh, but that was the first book that was like defining, like, how is it? And then, you know, how is it that so few people become millionaires? And why is this money conversation so difficult to figure out? So there became my journey. And I started hi really hiring mentors, um, became an entrepreneur, worked my way through school, played basketball, uh, academics, got a finance degree, got a master's in exercise physiology. Uh, my first big entrepreneurial venture at 24 is I got a big contract with Chevron to build 272 fitness centers on offshore oil rigs. Um, so, cause I had the finance and the exercise physiology background, so I could help, you know, really the HR departments talk about how unhealthy employees are costing their company money and how fitness centers are going to help fix it. So I was part of that huge era and then, uh, fast forward. Okay, so you, and, and you're already fast forwarding into that. Okay. How yeah, amazing absolutely. is that? I mean, you put the two together of physiology yeah. and then you put it together with this concept yeah. of like financial freedom, as you said. The, you know, the financial literacy, most of us didn't talk about money, right? It was the lack of, right? Oh, I don't have this. Oh, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, you got to work hard and, you know, to play hard. I mean, all these different concepts, these are all that were happening around us, but you were saying, Hey, wait a second. I want to, I want to, you know, approach, really go into this and say, why is that happening? I love that. I love that you broached the subject and it all started with think and grow rich. Yeah. And I still, I think it should be an annual read, you know, even if you just open the book up and just like read a page or read some paragraphs, there's such depth in the real application of it. So love it never that. Goes out, it never goes out of style, does it? Never goes out of style. Um, and then uh, I, I did the fitness part really in the exercise physiology because I've always been an athlete. I've always, you know, loved doing that. But, you know, what we do now, uh, Hillary, and how we I say we meaning an entrepreneur and a wealth builder and what I teach and how to become millionaires, um, it, which by the way, isn't some laurel theory. I mean, when I wrote The Millionaire Maker, this is like years and years and years of study of how millionaires happen. And there is really one big way, and we'll talk about that in a, you know, and I just teach how it happens. It's been the same way for decades. People ask me, um, you know, why don't I update The Millionaire Maker? I said, because the formula is the same. It was the same 10 years ago. It's be the same 20 years from now. It was the same 40 years ago right on how you become a millionaire. So we'll talk about the the, <clears throat> the system that I said that I put together. I call it the millionaire matrix on how to become a millionaire. It's not that difficult. Um, I teach it in three to five years. Uh, but I want to go back to like why I did the, a lot of people ask, well, why did you do the Chevron contract before you just jumped over back to finance? And I said, you know, this journey of becoming an entrepreneur, even though colleges now have some entrepreneurial training, it's not really real. Like my son is in university right now. He's uh, 20, he'll be 22 in a few weeks. And he'll call me back from university and he's gone to two different schools. And he'll say, mom, no one teaches me what you teach. They're mm -hmm. teaching me to have, to be a, you know, employee in finance an employee in accounting, <clears throat> right? To be an accounting manager. They're not teaching me to be an entrepreneur the way you're teaching. Um, so again, I just teach parents you've got to take it on yourself. So I knew what Chevron, um, I just didn't want to go get a job, quite frankly. And that was sort of an easy pathway. And it just happened. So after that, though, in 1996, I was working with Bob Proctor, again, always have had mentors. And Bob said, have you heard of Robert Kiyosaki and Sharon Lecter? This is 1996. And I'm like, no. And so I uh, flew down to Scottsdale, sat around Sharon's kitchen table and walked out and I became the master distributor of the cash flow game. So here I have this contract at Chevron and I have, so it's about a transition, <clears throat> massive transition. Because I went from being the exercise physiologist doing cost, you know, analysis at Chevron to the cash flow distributor. And, you know, a lot of my Chevron friends, you'll love this, Hillary, they say, what are you going to do? You're going to quit this huge job huge job. Cause at that point I was an employee. Um, and you're going to go follow some Japanese guy in a game around. Cause this was 1996. <laughs> nobody, knew, nobody knew who he was. So I was teased and teased. You have no idea. Uh, but that transition was big. And I coach a lot of people on the transition from, you know, corporate or, you know, a job into being an entrepreneur. And one of the biggest transitions, it's not the big one I'll, I'll kind of talk about, but it's that identity. I think your identity transition when you do make a move is so significant. And the, you know, the advice I tell people is do it quick, do it fast and, and be consistent. Rip, you know, the so I am, rip the band aid off. Yes. Rip the band aid off. And I became the master distributor of the cash flow game. And people are like, weren't you just 
over there yesterday. It's like, yeah, that's fine. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm transitioning and I just, I would move. I just got, I got there quickly. Okay. Um, but so before you, before you jump too fast, before you jump too fast, cause I do want to, I do want to address this one part and we can talk about it quickly, but you know, there are people that are sitting there listening right now. They're in corporate. I personally was in corporate for over 10 years and I knew deep down I was an entrepreneur. I knew it. I had already done businesses in college, but I took the corporate route because, you know, it, it fell into my lap, much like what you just said. It, it was kind of like, okay, it was easy. It was the next step. Let's do it. And then you spend, you get caught up in it. You don't, you, you can't leave, right? So I was an oracle, like I said, 10 years. And then all of a sudden, why did I make the move? I had a baby. And I'm like, wait a second, what do I really want to do? Next thing you know, the president of Oracle's leaving and he says, Hillary, come over to Kleiner Perkins, which is a venture capital firm and help coach all of our, all of our, you know, CEOs and entrepreneurs. But that was like, there was something above, there was something higher power pushing me out the door for mm -hmm. those that are sitting there right now, Laurel, and they're thinking, God, I really want to make a move, but I'm not 24. And I was at that point, 30 years old. I mean, yeah. what do you suggest to them that says, you know, as we said, rip the bandaid off. I had it happen, but I didn't really have to do it. It was kind of forced on me. Sounds like, you know, you had this opportunity and it was like, I'm going to take it. But for yeah. those that are on the fence, what do you tell them? Jump. <laughs> Don't worry about the net. It'll be there. I coach a lot of people. So I wouldn't jump blindly. Um, I really take people through a process of identifying, you know, what are they, what do they really want? There's a lot of ways to jump, especially in this economy right now. I mean, you know, COVID has provided such volatility, which also provides opportunity. So I've helped a lot of people who didn't want to go back uh, transition. In fact, I would say you know, if I had to pick one of the transitions, uh, transitioning into the amount of intense uh, in very intimate work that I do with people now. It is like cell phone to cell phone, more connected with more clients making that jump, going from whether it's corporate or they don't want to go back to corporate. Uh, I, I, here's what I say is really different than most people though, is a lot of people want to jump to go do their like dream job or passion. And I'm a huge believer and a very staunch believer, I'd say, of build it and I guarantee they won't come. Like you really, you really got to, uh, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a fan of pre-selling and doing deposits and really selling before and making sure that what you're going to provide to the market is really going to be there before you, you know, go plan and build and spend all this capital and time for, you know, sometimes people are spending a year, two years just getting ready to launch and there really are no sales. I mean, a huge, you know, uh, I said, I've been to Sharks since before Shark Tank gave us the name. And I asked the first question like they do was how much, you know, what's your first sale? Have you made any sales? And why do a launch without that? So I help a lot of people make that transition. And sometimes the transition isn't about the passion or even replacing your, you know, okay. income. It's this, is, this, this is so solid because if people really <laughs> understand you do not have to go out, you start to create, I, I got, I, as you do too, people calling, let me, let me show you the logo. Let me show you the website. Let me, but nobody's even said, yes, indeed, I will buy that product. You know, yeah. why create, especially, um, you know, in the tech world, there were people creating all these big things, but all you need to do is do a clickable prototype, just something that people could see like, yeah, I'd like that instead of having to feel like you got to spend all this money and then nobody, you know, build it and they will come. And as you said, build it and they won't come. I, I no doubt, hundred percent agree with you. So everyone yeah, listen to that. And I always say there's a guaranteed strategy to assure they're coming is, and it is pre-selling that like, I'm in the middle of doing a book too. Um, it's actually at McGraw Hill and final edits right now. It'll be the fourth book of the millionaire maker series, which is how to make your kids millionaires. So my kids were millionaires on paper at 10. Um, and I say the transition I want to talk about is, is being a single parent. Cause I've done this primarily I had a few years where I was with my daughter's, uh, father, but, uh, pretty much did this whole parenting journey with two children as a single parent and how you can do it. And it's a constant relaunch. It's a constant restructuring mm -hmm. of your life. Uh, but those of you that are listening that want to, you know, do that transition from employee to entrepreneur, or even do both. I'm a huge fan of doing both in the beginning. If you have that, um, I say opportunity to do that more from a cash flow standpoint. Um, but I say jump, jump. I mean, it's, it, it is so much fun out here right now. 
Well, and you've also, you also just threw in a whole bunch of stuff. So you have 10 year olds that were millionaires. Yep. Kids. I mean, I sprinkle a whole bunch. I mean, there was just a whole lot of stuff you just said, but the key takeaway is you can make millionaires out of kids. And there is that millionaire mindset that goes, and as you're saying, create it when you're young so that it, you know, literally is just something that you're developing as you continue to get older, but pretty damn impressive that you had your kids millionaires on paper by the time they're 10. Laurel, do tell, how does this happen? <laughs> There's a lot of strategies to it. And, uh, and you know, what's so interesting is they're pretty simple. Most people don't know them. Um, and as I started doing them, you know, whether it was my accountant, you know, our tax strategist. I mean, we just kind of make it up together. Um, so it's been fun. Uh, so some of the first things, do you want me to talk about the parenting side? I, <laughs> Let's you, you know what? We have so much to talk about. We have so much. We got to first make, we got to first make the parents millionaires so that we can then get the kids to be right. We got to get them. Like a- actually, we actually, that's, we actually have been debating that, uh, in, around with McGraw Hill in the book. And the truth is, uh, at this, I really think they can do it together. Some parents okay, together. Are, Good. We'll do it together because if you wait for the parents, um, yeah, it's just it. It doesn't have to go like that. It can actually go together. Um, that's really been the decision. I, with the I think that you know what I love the idea of creating the wealth together and creating the steps and understanding going down that journey, that path. That is yes, absolutely true. But before yeah, okay. we, and I know that you have on your website, cause I have checked it out. You have downloadables for some of the things around helping your kids manage the money and, and something, I saw something about, you know, don't pay them an allowance, something like that. We, they can, people go check out her website. I'm going to give you the link at the end, but right now let's keep going down that path with your journey of how this happened. Cause you and I were both single moms that created wealth ourselves and, you know, became millionaires. Awesome. Kudos, you know, high, I'm high-fiving you and I'm high-fiving myself. Sometimes we have to congratulate like, wow, we're in that elite club together, but we don't have to be. And tell us, you know, a little bit more about what, what you did to get there. Uh, well, and I said, you know, this is really about generational wealth. Cause I didn't grow up with it. Um, and didn't grow up in any of those conversations. And um, 1999 was my millionaire year, and it was the year that I had my son. Um, and so, again, called a mentor uh, January 8th, and I said, I have nine months to become a millionaire. I'm like, you know, the clock is ticking. He's like, why? And it's because I'm going to have a baby. So I had a lot going on. I knew how to make money. I'd, obviously, I'd done all that contracting at Chevron. So I knew how to make money, but I had a lot of things uh, out of order, and I call it sequencing. So probably the way I teach, not probably, the way I teach millionaire strategies that is so definitively different is about the sequence of how you do it, like putting things in the right order, um, from making money to how you keep it to how you invest it. And most people, their biggest challenge is they're not investing enough, soon enough and early enough and not for their children at all. So in 1999, um, I just started making it up really and uh, just checking in with you know a variety of my mentors. So immediately the strategy is your kids, you have a company, you have to have a company to employ your kids. You say, what do your kids do? There's a whole strategy around that, but your kids are literally, you need to employ them. And with the paycheck, you can get them a Roth IRA. And if all you did for 20 years is fund a Roth IRA, which can grow tax-free, tax deferred, right? $6,000 a year. If that's all you did, so it's 500 a month, that's all you have to contribute done right, invested right, especially in this volatile market, you could make your kids millionaires just with one move. But then I stacked on other moves. So I would buy real estate and inside that entity, I would just as a custodian add my kid's name and I had my other kid's name. So it's not hard. I mean, it's just what it is for those that actually That's understand. Great ideas right there, everyone. Listen to what you I mean, think. It's legacy. It's starting to plan legacies because I know so many, and I'm so about that conversation right now is how do you set up a legacy and really do generational wealth. I mean, and not just in concept, but for real, put it on paper and then yeah. grow those kids into it and transition those kids. So for example, I'll give you one hot, hot, hot fun strategy. When my son was 18, um, he, he was on an academic at a football scholarship. So I gotta say, you know, go Georgia Southern cause he played, he's a starting center for Georgia Southern. Um, <laughs> and so much fun. Um, so when I fly back and forth to see him play ball or he flies, you know, back to Northern Nevada, when he was 18, I gave him, you know, he signed into that LLC as a legal adult. So now he's just not my son. He's also my partner. 
Now, some of the families that are listening will say, well, that's an obvious strategy. He said, yeah, but take it one step further. The company has educational uh, you know, requirements and, and corporate resolutions um, that require the owners right, uh, and directors to get educated. And there's education reimbursement. So when uh-huh. I fly to Georgia, I mean, we are talking about real estate. In fact, the next trip I'm going out there, we are looking for a duplex and a fourplex for him to live in, rent the rest of it. Um, so, I mean, it's all legitimate business, but I'm now not doing that trip as just a cost to Laurel Langmeyer. The company is doing a business write-off. So I tuck everything and I'm going to teach all of you employees out there how to use a corporation. In America, it's 81,000 pages of tax code. So this is really where I get in a fun strategy with a lot of families is how they use this amazing corporate structure, trust structures, and design legacies and how do they include their kids in the entire process instead of a lot of parents, you know, they, they keep the money part separate and they keep it secret and no one has conversations about it. And it's so critical. Well, I think to- many of us have a 529 and I know my kids, you know, one of them, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm like, whoa, uh, this is such a great idea. And well, by the way, she was an intern for us this summer and didn't even think about that. Didn't even know that. So I think it's an absolutely incredible strategy that um, I, I definitely want to follow up on you on that. Okay. So, but I, I want to go back here from this significant relaunch, which yeah. is now taking you kind of down this path of helping people become millionaires. What is at the root of why do you want to help people become millionaires? Uh, so what's your, I love- what's your why? I guess that's really, you know, what is it? Yeah. My why is the ch- to change this conversation about money. Actually, I'm going to say, bring the financial literacy conversation about money. You know, I'm on so many business platforms and it's interesting to hear the business strategy, but there's no financial strategy. Just like what I was just speaking of, the entity, the trust, the corporate structure, the tax structure, the, and, and, and even investing inside the company. Those pieces, the financial infrastructure of the business structure is left out. Because so many people it, you know, are spending so much time on the marketing and sales, which is great. I, I spend a ton of time. I'm not saying don't do that, but the financial side is not there. So, you know, just you know, and Laurel, there's a, there's a point that I want to make because I think people probably, I know I fell victim to this as well. I went after, okay, I have my once a month bookkeeper call. We go through every single line item and that's all looking at the past. It's the forward thinking. It's what can you be doing smart to set up the business in the future that really makes your company get to the seven figure, eight figure plus mark. Yep. Yeah. And it's all the, I call it revenue modeling and, you know, the financial projections and then the decision. So here's what's interesting too, Hillary, that a lot of, I think more sophisticated business owners that are watching would understand it, but a lot of decision-making is made by looking at your checkbook balance. And I said, don't you, you shouldn't be making, I'll say wealthy people like that. I'm going to teach you to be, don't make decisions necessarily just by your checkbook balance. I mean, that's a data point, but really you're making it on revenue models and financial projections. So if you know you're making 20, 50, 100 million a month, whatever you're making, you're making and spending and investing very differently, knowing those future projections, like exactly like you said, most people live their financial and business life in a rear view mirror versus at the windshield. Like they really got to live through that and then start trusting it and leading that way. So there's a whole structure to that, that I love teaching. So what's my why? I love this conversation. And I, it's actually um, devastating. When I listen to people who have listened to, um, I'm going to say the old fashioned folks, I won't even name their names, but you know who they are about, you know, staying out of debt and living within your means. I blow all that out. I mean, one of my books is called Yes Energy, right? Which is, you know, say yes and figure it out. You can make as much money as you want. You can have whatever you want. I mean, most of my life, how I strategize doing this as a single mom is I brought, I bought a, a private aircraft. So I flew 13 of my years, my core years in private aircraft. I call it my minivan in the sky. So I had car seats and strollers. I just parked it off. <laughs> we would just fly. We would go from one city to the next city and not have to worry about all that. The efficiency was there. Um, but I just, there, you can do anything you want. So I live from the, the lens of yes. And I want people to live financially like that. And most people are suffering financially, especially with COVID. And they're making really wrong decisions because they're, they're just not taught right. I mean, money is wow. so 
And, and I think I think a real polarizing conversation that I know I have many times with entrepreneurs, and I had it when I first uh, started dating my 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 husband, my second husband. I said, you know what? I really have this underlying belief that you have to spend money to make money. You have to be forward thinking. You have to be having the idea of you're here, but you want to go there. And what is it going to take the team you're going to need to put in place? And he looked at me, started laughing and he said, whoa, (laughs) okay. Help me understand that a little bit more, but it is. Don't, do you feel that too many people are, being too, you know, protective and that when they finally start to have some success in their business, they don't have the team, they don't have the processes Mm -hmm. in place because they haven't spent the money to get there because they're waiting to get enough money so that they have the money. What do you, how do you suggest people handle that, that dichotomy of like, yeah, I know I need to spend more money, but I don't have it right now. Make it. I mean, (laughs) I, I, (laughs) I do. I say, go make more. And what you just said that, uh, you know, Kiyosaki called it the rat race, right? But that cycle of making it, and then I'm going to say spending inappropriately. I, I love working with people on their, their forecast and how they're going to spend their money for growth. And women are the worst at it. Women but have, and I think, I don't know what, if it's just this maternal thing that happens, but women are notoriously late hires. They don't hire team fast enough. They don't bring on help fast enough. And so then they get exhausted. And if you think about a business from very simplistic terms, you have marketing, sales, you have accounting, you have fulfillment, operations, technology, you have all this thing, all these departments. And I actually teach it that way. So I want to say, so you're really going to do every department in your company. And then it's a little wake up call, especially for brand new entrepreneurs who don't really understand what it takes to really run a company. They said, so design an org chart and you don't get to be in it. And that's a little, that's seeing a pretty rigorous activity. I then, love doing that. It's so I love that activity. I love that activity because it's, it really has you, anyone have to stop and then, and then design the revenue. And mm-hmm. my favorite thing, and, and I, my favorite urgent thing right next to millionaire, but that's my favorite thing to do with people is to get you past a hundred thousand. If an entrepreneur can't get past that hundred thousand mark, it's the hardest money to make because they don't know how to be an entrepreneur. So they're making, they're fumbling around, making a lot of mistakes, trying to do it all themselves. They're not good at it, right? So, the, as, and then what happens to most businesses isn't that the idea was bad or, you know, the person was bad. They're exhausted and they they just didn't hire enough team fast enough. You really don't have to, here's, here's what I teach people. You actually don't have to know how to do any of it. You have to lead it all. So the faster you can get revenue to hire the teams, the faster these teams and systems move. And then, yes, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge bootstrapper. I've, I've bootstrapped companies intentionally just to prove it can work from absolutely nothing. Um, but I also know, like, once you get to a certain level, capital does help, right? Making money and spending money the right way absolutely uh, grows you to the next, you know, to the next level. Uh, but there's just so, so many people who just don't know how to make that first money and, and a lot of them don't even know what their offers are, you know? So, you know, yeah, before- that could be a whole nother conversation around your <laughs> offer and what you're doing, but that is really interesting that, you know, it's that, that concept of, you know, I, I call it the, I can do that syndrome. And as women we're you know, taught when we're young that, you know, yeah, that you can, but here's the key is that yes, you can do it. Absolutely but you shouldn't be doing it. (laughs) You got to hire the right people. Okay. This conversation is whizzing by. I'm sure people's heads are spinning right now. I would like to talk about, you know, the idea and the concept around the silver lining around where you are now. And you've gone through all of the different, you've had those transitions. As you said, you've relaunched many multiple times. But it seems like right now you are really set on your passion, on what you're doing, the cause to be out there and create financial literacy in people. Who do you primarily work with? Um, boy, the, it's a big range. It's a big range. I'd say the, the people that I'm having, um, I'm going to say the most fun with. Uh, our families. I mean, whether it's a single parent, I'm doing a lot of work with single. I mean, COVID's created an interesting spin of single parents uh, across the world. I see that uh, fam- entrepreneurs, um, let's see, I got to back up and really define it because it's really wide. I mean, what I really love to do is plan legacy work. We 
people. So from being an entrepreneur to how are they keeping their money? Some of those strategies I just shared, I mean, that was just like one or two. I mean, I have a whole bag of tricks um, that are super strategies. Well, I have a whole bunch of books too that are fantastic. So yeah, I got five. I'm actually part of, because Kevin Harrington and I did some books together, uh, Sharon Lecter and I've done books. So I have actually, I don't know, 40, 50 books, um, but five New York Times, which were, that was a big run. Uh, I was Dr. Phil's money expert during then, The Secret. Um, so my, my range of client is really wide, but who, who I enjoy and where we have the most fun are really the families. I'm going to say that actually do have kids that want to be a part of it, that are doing some legacy work. Um, people, you know, kids that are about to inherit. I got a whole group of new clients where they're going to inherit some money and they have no idea what to do with it. Um, so just, it's a, it's a range from startup entrepreneurs to the legacy ones are fun because the, the conversations are rich. And, yeah. and I'm very straight, I'm very direct about it. Like, you know, I'm the one that will stand in there and say, so what if, what if right. the divorce happens? What if yeah. the child gets divorced? Like, where's the prenuptials? I, I always say, design your divorce while you're in love. <clears throat> so I'm the one that will ask the hard questions around the operating agreements and the trust agreements. And I just love stimulating those. I don't give the advice. I'm the one stimulating the conversations. And then I've created this amazing team of lawyers and accountants and real estate experts and just a whole variety of experts that can help like do the work. I stimulate in the uh, conversation and the strategy. Okay. Amazing. So this is, I mean, you are like, uh, uh, honestly, the things that you're just, you continue to throw out these little like golden nuggets. I'm like, hold on. We don't even have time to talk about that. But as we wrap up, I always do rapid fire questions. And one of the things that I know our audience would be interested in hearing is if you were to suggest one thing right now, all right, a, a first step down this process that I want to go on the path of becoming a millionaire, what would that be? Make money. <laughs> and do you have anything that you would be like, make money, give me, give me one more step there. Make money. <laughs> make money. So um, I would say you, you got you to stay in revenue, right? So uh, for those of you that have, have, you know, already have businesses, I would just amplify it. I mean, if you have a six figure business already going to seven and eight, as you know, too, Hillary, it's not that difficult. That first six is the hardest money you'll ever make is how I teach it. Once you're past six, go for it. Because part of that going for it is where that, if you haven't become a millionaire, where the millionaire money is going to be made. So from the money that you're going to make, doing whatever the thing is you're going to do, right? You've got to provide a product or service. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's an obvious, but that extra money, um, is what I love to repattern people. Most people have such a lifestyle pattern. In fact, one of my books, I write about the lifestyle cycle. People are caught in a lifestyle cycle of make it, spend it, make it, spend it. That's obvious. But the, the millionaire's pattern is make it invested. And when you really learn and get behaviorally structured like that, and your kids do that, and there's really fun things that I do. Like I, I do have that program called Never Pay Your Kid an Allowance. My son and I did that when he was 12 years old. And, and they really start putting money away. And, and, and it's a behavior for them. You've changed their life. So I love all of that strategy and structure. So what's the one thing is make money. And so the next would be an invest part of it. Mm, that I think is the key right there. That is so good. Okay. So one of the final questions I always ask is what is your favorite beauty product by name? Because these are the important things too. This, this gives you the richness of your own beauty products. <laughs> so what would you say? So I love, I've been a huge part of new skin, which is a direct sales company, but they have this galvanic spa, uh, which is a facial, um, treatment that you do. And, um, uh, I love that. Awesome. Okay, everyone, you heard that. And Laurel, when you think of, we always talk about people in our program being powerhouse of possibilities. What does that mean to you? Mm, a powerhouse of possibilities? I, well, I would look to you. I would say to the person listening, it's you. It's inside of you. So where are they? I say, bring that greatest part of that powerhouse of of life, bring it forward. Somebody's waiting for you to show up. You know, that's how I teach entrepreneurs. It isn't really through a sales process, but from a service process. Um, so you see what drives me is I've been given this amazing gift of financial literacy. And, you know, there's a lot of people waiting for me to deliver it to them. And I know that's the same for the person listening. They're a powerhouse. They need to bring it forward and uh, bring it to the world.
Mm, that is so great. And how do people hear more about you? How can they get in touch with you? Well, I have this fun website. It's called uh, Just Met Laurel because you probably just met me. So it's J U S T M E T L O R A L. I could spell my name right. A lot of people spell it that old fashioned way L A U R A L. And it's L O R A L. So justmetlaurel.com forward slash relaunch co. So you got to put the, the relaunch co at the end. And uh, I have a whole bunch of gifts. I have a uh, copy of my millionaire maker book. I have the never pay your kids an allowance. I have some other just broadcasts that I have done. Uh, one that was at UCLA to uh, uh, entrepreneurial college, um, how to put more cash in your pocket, a whole variety of free gifts out there. Okay. My daughter just graduated from UCLA and did the entrepreneur. Yeah. Play, so I wonder if she, if she got to hear it. All right. Well, listen, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I feel like we could have gone for 10 hours and you are just like on fire. I love it. And I hope to have you back on the show so we can talk more about the, some of the specifics and keep working on this because I love it. And I agree with you. Everyone needs financial literacy and every single person out there, there is a pathway Way to bringing you to become that millionaire, not only in your financial account, but also a millionaire mindset. So thank you again, Laurel, for being here. Thanks, Hillary. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Silver Lined Relaunch. If I said something today that resonated with you, will you please head over to iTunes right now and leave us a five-star review and share this episode with others and help them find the silver linings as well. And don't forget, you can have immediate access to the show notes, any giveaways, and the links to those amazing beauty products at therelaunchco.com backslash podcast. Until next time. There's always a silver lining, and now is the time to hit the reset button to relaunch those transitions into transformations.